Eric with Brock and H Farm Toys. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to take an Ertl Kenworth T600B and make it a flat top. Plus, I'll demonstrate how to put it on a DCP frame. DCP frames are very nice, and by mounting the cab to this frame, guarantees that trailers made by DCP will match up perfectly to the cab and give you a model your relatives will fight over when you're dead. This particular build will be made much easier with proper tools. A Dremel or other rotary tool is advised to speed up the process. To begin, both cabs will need to be disassembled. I'm using a DCP IH Pro Star for the frame. This frame measures 4 and an 8th inch long from the center of the front wheels to the center of the rear tandem. This frame worked great and definitely I recommend using it. To begin, take the ProStar apart. Remove the two Phillips screws on the bottom side of the cab. Once the cab is removed, take off any parts you may want to save for other projects or use on the new build. The hood and bumper are attached with four pins. Remove the bumper first using a small side cutter, then remove the hood. fuel tanks can be pried off with a flathead screwdriver. If the fuel tanks do not come off easy, cut off any plastic behind the tank on the frame, then pry again. out the engine and radiator and the front mud flaps. For this build, I do not want to use the factory wheels that come with the ProStar, so I'm swapping them out for traditional 10-hole chrome wheels.
break off the hood mounting die cast as those pieces will be in the way of the new body. Notice the ProStar wheels on the right and the new wheels on the left. Mount the new wheels and tires of choice for dry fitting parts. ProStar frame is slightly narrow compared to the body of the T600. For this truck, I will make it a solid axle with a spacer so the width is correct. To take apart the T600, three mushroomed areas of diecast will need to be drilled out to separate the diecast body from the plastic frame. I take care not to break anything, but if the bumper breaks off at the axle, that's not a big deal. The body will come apart in two pieces, but there will be one more mushroom piece of die cast to be drilled out before the two parts can be separated. A small screwdriver can help to separate the two parts from the body. Remove the cab glass, exhaust, and chrome step. When removing the headlights, do that over a dark cloth of some sort so they do not pop out and bounce away. The dark cloth will help you see the parts. Save all the parts in a closed container for later use. To make the T600 a flat top, I'm using my bandsaw to cut just below the windows on the sleeper. That cut will be a bit too tall, but I will shape it and fit it on my sander. A Dremel will work for this process as well. Even a hacksaw will work if that's all you have to use. I have a rotary disc sander that makes short work of cleaning up cut lines and making the opening true. You can do this same process with a file. The lower part of the cab body will also need to be shortened up. On this model, 
I cut right behind the hole where the exhaust came through the frame. The part does not need to be this long, but I prefer the fit and finish at this length. Plus, it gives a solid place to match the exhaust again. On the lower body, there will also be die cast that needs to be removed, so the body will fit around the new frame. I use my bandsaw to make two cuts along the inside of the frame into the area that tapers up to the hood. After the two cuts are made, break the waste piece of die cast out. The T600 body did not fit my new frame perfectly. To clean up the cut lines, I took the body to my disc sander and removed metal on both sides of the body until the frame fits snug. A file or Dremel would accomplish the same task. The next big task is to remove the Ertl axle house and the mounting sprue. This will take a bit of time with a rotary tool and is the recommended tool for this job. The axle mounting area on the T600 will need more material removed to fit correctly on the new frame. Use the Dremel or rotary tool to grind out the die cast until it is almost flat. When the die cast is flattened out, Turn the body parallel to cut off the wheel and grind out the area until it is curved out. This ensures it is hidden from view and will give it a clean look. When all the grinding is done, the bottom side of the body will have a nice professional look. Grind the sprue flat as well, as we may need a flat surface for a shim when attaching the body to the frame. The frame will need a minor amount of grinding too. There are a couple areas on the frame that need to be smoothed out. Plus, a bit of glue residue from the factory exists too. A file will make short work of this process or a Dremel. Dry fit the body and frame pieces to see how the parts fit together. I like a snug fit without warping any die cast where the parts are fit together. Take a file and remove any burrs that might get in the way. One step that is necessary for final assembly is to cut the plastic fairings apart. This will be a rough cut as shaping will be needed later. Center the frame on the plastic. Draw a line on both sides of the frame. Use a knife or saw to cut out the middle of the plastic. Save the fairings in a safe place for later use. Now it is time to strip paint off the die cast parts. I'll use lacquer thinner or household paint stripper. In this demonstration, I'm using household paint stripper. The paint stripper is a skin irritant. Use needle nose pliers to handle the parts. Avoid getting any on your hands. After a few seconds, the paint will begin to bubble up and come off. If an area of paint does not come off easily, reapply the paint stripper. I use a rag to wipe off paint stripper and paint. A wire wheel in my drill press is the final tool to remove loose paint and shine up the metal. An X-Acto knife or small file can be used to clean up any paint left over in window openings and door frames. To add details such as grab handles on the cab, 
Drill those holes before any paint or primer goes on. Drilling holes ensures detail parts will not come off easily if the model is accidentally bumped. A 1 32nd drill bit works great for this purpose. I buy all my drill bits at www.toolstoday.com. Place those detail parts where you wish. Use pictures of real trucks for reference. To cover the hole for the flat top, use flat styrene sheet. For this project, I have Plaster 91104 on hand to complete this build. I like to cut the plastic bigger than the opening. Then use a liberal amount of glue to attach it to the cab. Maxicure Ultra Thick is my glue of choice. Once the glue is dry, an X-Acto knife can be used to shave the styrene down. Another method is to use a fine sanding wheel and a rotary tool or file to even up the styrene edges. Once the edges of the styrene are evened up with the die cast, I use 240 grit sandpaper to true up the edges of the plastic and make them clean. If uneven lines still exist after sanding, use Bondo glazing and spot putty to cover those areas. Once that putty is dry, hand sanding is very easy and paints extremely well. Apply a generous amount to those areas that need attention. Depending on the amount of ply and air temperature, the putty can be sanded in 30 minutes after application. Sanding was completed with 240 grit paper. After the first layer of putty is sanded, the model can be primed. Before priming, wipe the entire model down with lacquer thinner to clean up any oils left by hands, dust, and other residue that may affect the primer and paint. I use self-etching primer purchased from an auto parts store. It is more expensive than regular primer, but after this much time building, I want an excellent finish on the model. When the primer is dry, look for imperfections that the primer reveals, such as gouges and lines that were not seen on the unprimed model. Fill those imperfections in with putty, let it dry, and sand it down again. If all the edges are clean and neat after the second coat of primer, paint can be added. See the video titled, Preval Evaluation to see how these models were painted with special paint mix just for this build. These cabs received three coats of this shade of blue. For this build, I applied all the decals before two coats of clear coat were applied. This ensures the decals will never peel off. Watch my video on applying decals to see how that process is accomplished. When the clear coat is applied and dry, use paint pens to add color to details such as clearance lights, door handles, and other detail lights. Paint pens can be purchased at many hobby stores. To reassemble the model, dry fit the parts to ensure they fit properly. Reassemble the cab glass with a bit of glue. Move to the hood and fit the grill pieces in place. They do install a specific way. Make sure they go in correctly. Install the headlights. Use a touch of glue on the back side to keep them in place. Install the plastic step and fix with glue. Again, Dry fit all the pieces before gluing to make sure they all fit well. To join the cab and hood pieces, place a line of glue around the inside of the front of the cab area. Apply another line of glue to the inside areas of the hood where the cab will rest. Hold in place for at least 15 seconds making sure all the lines of the cab and hood match perfectly. Add the exhaust once the cab and hood have dried. Aftermarket exhaust can be added to give a custom look as desired. The factory exhaust was used on this model, but was shortened to peek out above the sleeper. The cab was dry fit on the frame early on. Test fit once more. When the cab sits level on the frame and the fender set correctly over the front tires, add glue to the bottom edge of the cab along the frame rail. Allow it to dry.
While the glue is drying, begin shaping the fairing to fit the cab. When the fairings have been shaped and fit the lines of the truck correctly, add a line of glue to the inside edges of the plastic and fix to the cab. The front bumper will also need shaping to fit the frame correctly. Cut excess plastic away. Use a rotary tool or file to remove additional plastic. This will take dry fitting in order to determine how much plastic needs to be removed. Apply glue to the die cast where the bumper will set. Apply the glue to the inside edges to prevent glue from seeping out the front of the bumper and die cast. Allow it to dry. This particular cab came with the mirrors unattached and needed to be separated from the holder. These were dry fit before gluing. A bit of glue was used to attach them to the cab. When all the details are added, your world-class handcrafted model is completed and ready to enjoy. If you have questions, please post comments and questions in the comment box. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.